Yes, once. Good. Okay, thank you. Okay, hello. Uh, hello, uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Mark Turner, and I'm uh, one of the engineers working here at IMEDEA at the Sosip Glider facility, which manages the Sosip Glider fleet and also contributes to the coordination and, and operation of the of IMEDEA zone glider fleet. Uh, briefly, uh, I would like to introduce the Jericho Next TNA program, which is a 9.9 .9 million uh, European program for four years, uh, with 34 uh, expert partners from 15 countries, and uh, coordinated by IFMF from France. Uh, this uh, Jericho Next is the continuation of uh, Jericho FP7 project. And uh, the main objective consists in uh, strengthening and enlarging a solid and transparent European network in providing operational services for continuous and sustainable delivery of high quality environmental data. In order to reach these objectives, uh, Jericho Next concentrated the efforts in uh, three coordinated activities, one of which is known as TNA. The primary objective of this activity, uh, which is the World Package 7, is to provide coordinated free of charge transnational access to researchers or research teams from academy and industry to original coastal infrastructures such as SOSIP operated by the Jericho Next uh, Consortium. Uh, Jericho Next organized three calls of TNA uh, to a chosen number of its infrastructures and installations, among of which SOSIP is one. Uh, proof users uh, received local assistance by the operators of the infrastructure uh, for the use. The DEFPAM project is a proposal which was granted during the third call of the TNA initiative. As part of the user grant, our speakers got funded to visit us with the main objective of bringing, the, bringing their instrument, which is this one you can see here, the, 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 small, the small hydrophone on top of the glider. Uh, and to work with uh, the glider facility members in order to prepare the glider that will carry uh, it on board during a 50-day deployment that will start, we will try next Monday. Uh, and Jericho Next TNA has provided the funds for the first uh, 20 days of mission of this survey. To conclude my introduction, I would like to, to thank our speakers today, uh, Professor Eric Parmentier, is the current director of the Freshwater and, Ocean and Oce Oceanic uh, Science Unit of Research at the University of Liège in Belgium, and the head laboratory of morphology, well, I, I cannot pronounce, sorry. <laughs> One of Eric's uh, main research axes aims to determine the fundamental components of acoustic communication, uh, sound production and hearing in fishes and their evolution. And uh, since completing her PhD in aquatic science in 2016 in Ireland, Dr. Uh, Marta Bolgan, over there, say hello, Marta, uh, has been a postdoctoral researcher at this uh, laboratory that I cannot pronounce in French. Uh, Marta is particularly. <laughs> okay, thank you. Marta is particularly interested in the application of passive acoustics for fish populations monitoring. And she has recently uh, started to integrate knowledge about the diversity of fish sounds and of morphological adaptations to the characterization of Mediterranean fish communities Thank dynamics. You. And um, well, also special thanks to, to Ignacy Catala first, because he was the one who put me in touch with, with Marta <laughs> two years ago. And also to Pepa Los, Charina Cañas, and Jorge Terrados, who, who helped me to to organize this, this seminar. And thank you all very much for being here, and I hope you enjoy this talk. OK, so thank you very much, Mark. Uh, so I would like to, to, to try to convince you that some fishes are able to, to make sounds uh, for communicate. So we are going to, to see um, some images and sound about this. So first of all, we are from the Laboratoire de Morphologie Fonctionnelle et Evolutive. <laughs> okay. uh, we have different kinds of uh, research. Uh, it's a laboratory of morphology, so we like to, to dissect. If you want me being happy, just give me a fish, and I'm going to dissect all the day, and uh, it will be uh, really nice. Also, of course, we, we work also with uh, electronic microscopy. 
And as Mark told you, uh, we work also on the acoustic communication uh, in fishes. More and more uh, fish species are, are now known to be able to, to make sounds. Of course, if they make sound, it's stupid also to not try to have information on the hearing system. It means also that now we use also different uh, electronic systems just to be able to know if what kinds of sounds the fishes are able to, to hear. It's very less than you. I mean, you is between you are uh, able to hertz on between 20 and 20,000 hertz. Uh, classically, a fish it's between 20, 20 hertz and a maximum of 5,000 hertz. So uh, they are less, uh, they, they have less abilities than hers. So I suppose that, I hope you know uh, the, this movie, it's, uh, Le Monde du Silence, it was done by, uh, by Cousteau, it was at the really beginning of the uh, oceanographic uh, research and it was mainly to, to show to people what was happening under the sea. Uh, and so the silent word uh, was described, as it was uh, the title of the, of the movie, but I can show you that, that the, this world is uh, quite uh, noisy. Uh, in fact, you have three different kinds of sounds uh, in the water. Uh, you have sounds that have a biological origin. Uh, of course, you have the sound production. You know already that whales and dolphins are able to, to produce sounds, but we can have also have sounds from the snapping shrimp, so for example. Uh, there are a lot of non-biological sounds, so it's uh, mainly uh, abiotic uh, sources, and a lot of sounds that are due to, uh, to, due to humans. These sounds are more and more important. You can just imagine that every 10 years, the volume of sounds in the water is just double. So it's quite uh, important. There are more and more sounds, and of course, these sounds are related to, uh, to the ship activities and also to, to, to the mine uh, activity. So you, you have three different kinds uh, of sounds, and all these sounds, when you group them together, together they are making what we call the soundscape. And one of the favorite job of Marta is to try to analyze the, the soundscapes and, for example, to see how the sounds that are made by humans could uh, have an impact of the sounds that are made by uh, fish and uh, other, and other, uh, other species. Uh, the main difficulty when you work on the acoustic communication is fishes is just to be able to be sure that a fish is making a sound for a communication. Uh, because it is not because that you are making a sound that you are communicating. Uh, for example, most of the fishes are able to make hydrodynamic sounds just when you have a shoal of fishes, when they change direction, then when there is an acceleration, uh, it can be related to a sound. Uh, other fishes are also making sounds just when they, when they feed. Uh, it is exactly the same eh? when you are going to, to the theater and uh, your, your neighbor is going, is, is eating all the chips and you are just unable to, to listen the, to, to, to watch the movie. It is the same. He is not going in this case to communicate, but at least the sun show you is, show, shows you is there. So the, the, that's the reason it is not really to, to see where, where is, is there really a communication. Because the, 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 the simple fact to be there, of course, can have an influence uh, on, your, on your behavior. Uh, in the lab, we try mainly to, to work on, really on acoustic communication. And so in this case, you have to, uh, to consider that a fish is emitting a sound. And the aim of these sounds is to change the behavior of the fish that is going to receive the sounds. And this modification of the behavior has to be favorable for the fish that has emitted the sounds. It can be favorable for the second fish, but it is not uh, especially, uh, it is not always the, the case. So we are, we, we are, we are going to speak about, uh, about this. Uh, just to, to, to show you, uh, we have uh, visited different countries. Uh, here you can see all the, all the, the countries we have visited and we have uh, sounds from all these parts uh, of, the, of the world. I suppose you recognize this. 
we did it uh, on, not only for marine fish, but also for freshwater uh, species. Uh, and here you have all the family we have been able to, to record. And once again, when I say to record them, uh, it was because there was a communication between the different uh, species. And here it is just to, to show you that uh, you have seawater fish, you have freshwater fish, but they are all able to, uh, to communicate. Uh, here are some uh, examples, if you want. So you have not only the, the clone fish, but all the damsel fishes, so all fishes from the uh, Poma sandwich family. In fact, it's, on, it's some more, more or less 400 species. We did not record all the species, but because we are working in a lab of morphology, uh, we were able to show the mechanism of sound production, uh, and we were able to, di to dissect a lot of different species, and they all have the mechanism. So even if we don't, do not have the sounds, we know that at least 400 species of pomacentrid are able to, uh, to communicate. And for this, this one, it's, it's really nice, it's really uh, easy. Uh, if you want to have a sound with a clownfish, you just place a clownfish in a tank. Uh, a, a fish is stupid enough to, to think that if, he's in a, if, he, if the fish is in a tank for at least one day, it is his tank. It is his territory. So in this case, you just have to add a second fish, and you are going to see that all the fish are going to fight. And before fighting, they just make a sound, because it's less dangerous. Just if you have a problem with somebody, it's, be it's better to cry. Uh, in, in this case, but you can hope that the other guy is going to escape. If he does not escape, it could be more dangerous, but at least there was a chance to, uh, to, uh, to avoid some, uh, some problems. Uh, I don't know if you don't know, uh, know uh, this fish, uh, that's the pearl fish. Uh, there is one species here on, in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, the, these fishes are able to enter and to live inside sea cucumbers. Uh, they, they are also able to, uh, to make sounds. And when I say they are able to make sounds, we were able to record five different sounds for the same species, meaning that not, they are not only able to make sounds, but they are also able to send different kinds of uh, messages according to the, uh, to the behavior. Uh, I suppose you know also this one, the, the grouper. Uh, I, you, you, you will have sounds uh, later. Uh, Ballist, they, they make sounds with a special mechanism. They are just able to, to flap the, uh, the pectoral thing against the, the body, and they make really uh, beautiful sounds. You see, here is for the gobits. They make sounds mainly to, to attract the, the female and uh, also to, to fight uh, with, uh, with other males. Uh, I suppose you know also the, the tilapia, it is the, the second most eaten fish uh, in the world. Uh, the, these guys, um, uh, the shit, the, no, shit is not the name of the fish. <laughs> the soldier fish, uh, the soldier fish or the squirrel fish. Uh, they, they live in groups and they, they, all, and they are also able to make different kinds uh, of sounds. It's really easy to work also with this fish because you just have to take this fish by hand and they are going to, to make sounds. So it's really nice to, to try to, to, to work with them. Uh, is it the same for the piranhas? Uh, uh, we have recorded the sounds in something like 20 different species uh, of piranha. And once again, you just take the piranha uh, by hand and you see the big piranha that is going to, to bite you, saying, no, 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 don't touch me, don't touch me. So uh, it's easy to work also with, uh, with them. Uh, catfish, many catfish are able to, uh, to, to, produce, to produce sounds in different contexts uh, behavior. The boxfish, this is not for the boxfish. This is for this one, the migra. So you, 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 this sound is really nice. In fact, the, these fish are able, this kind of, are able to do this kind of sounds one month a year. 
and they do it only during the reproduction period. And at that time, a lot of fishes are grouping together and they make songs to, to try to attract the female. We have found some, some texts that were written in uh, 1600. Uh, fishermen just explain that one month a year, they take the boat to go into the sea and they just place the, the, the hair on the bottom of the, uh, of the boat just to know when, where they have to, to put uh, the net. But also, once again, just try to, to imagine this. You are, you are alone, it, it's midnight, you are alone on the sea and uh, you have uh, the sun uh, all around uh, you. And you have the, the pemphales I'm going to, to show you. And finally, it's quite uh, new. Uh, the publication is uh, submitted uh, af after five years of uh, research. We have uh, found uh, we have found the, a song that was uh, made by the by the, course, the scorpion fish. But I will uh, explain you this uh, later. So it means that there are around uh, 32,000 uh, of species, uh, that, and it means also there are uh, around 800 families. And now around the world, we, when I say we, I'm not only uh, our lab, but uh, people have been able to record the sounds in a communication purpose in 120 uh, species. And I'm quite sure that m there are more uh, species that are able to, uh, to, ma to make sounds. So uh, we still have a, a lot of work to, to be able to, to record all these guys. So uh, what are the context? Uh, the, the main context is the identification. We consider that all the sounds are species specific. So you know that some uh, people are able to, to work in the, in the forest, in the, in the country, and to listen to the birds, and they are able to recognize the birds with, the, with their songs. We consider it should be the same with the, uh, with the fish. So the, uh, the first context is uh, the identification. Uh, you can easily understand uh, it is important. Uh, not, not you, because I see when, the, when I'm swimming in the Mediterranean Sea, it's quite easy to have a good visibility in, in most of the park. Uh, come in Belgium, uh, you place your head into the water, it's impossible to see uh, the, the extremity of your end. Uh, but, and, and, and I'm speaking about uh, in the water depth of uh, one meter, so uh, you can easily understand that in this condition, you need a sense to find at least your sexual partner. Uh, it is not easy. And, and what, what, what can you do? You can use your eyes. Not easy when the, 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 there is a lot of sand in suspension. In suspension, you can use the other, but in this case you have to to, to be in the, in the current. Uh, in counter in counter current, it, it does not work. But the, the main advantage with the sounds is that the sounds is going to travel uh, in all the in all the directions. And of course, uh, if we when we have worked in Tahiti, uh, in Madagascar, it was uh, easy to to have an, a nice view. But if you go deeper than uh, 300 meters, it is not uh, uh, possible to, to see. So you have to find a way to, to communicate and again to find your sexual partner. Uh, a lot of sounds are made also during agonistic uh, behavior uh, because a lot of uh, fish species are territorial, so they just want to defend the, uh, the territory. Uh, this is the, probably the, the easiest uh, behavior on which we can work because we, we, we just have to provoke fights uh, between fish in the tank. So with this kind of behavior, it's quite easy to have, uh, to have sounds. Uh, many sounds are made during courtship. You're, so you are, you are, you are beings, you know how it works. Huh? I, I have a beautiful song so because it means I am the... I am the most beautiful guy, the strong beautiful guy, so you should be with me and not with, uh, with him. And so all the fish are trying to, uh, to make a lot of sounds into the water. For example, for one species, the toadfish, uh, we now know that females are attracted by the guy that is not especially speaking louder, but that makes most sound per unit of time. So it can be boring, but the females are attracted by, by this kind of, uh, 
of uh, behavior. And also, the sounds can be used to, um, to, the, to the spawning. Because uh, you know that during the, the reproduction, most of fishes are just uh, going in the water uh, colon. And so you have the, the sperm, you have the, the eggs. Uh, if you want to have a, a good uh, fecundation weight, uh, it's nice to be together and close. Uh, if there are eggs there and sperm there, it is not a good idea to, to have the fecundation. So they, have, they try to, to be close. And for many of species, we have also noticed that they emit sounds just at the time of gamete release. So it helps, again, to have a better fecundation uh, between uh, males and uh, female gametes. Uh, sounds can be also used during uh, shoaling or, or schooling uh, when the fish, uh, so, but in fact, when the, the school is disaggregated, uh, they can just make sounds to, to find, again, the, the partner and to, and to make the sound. And it is quite important, for example, for the clupeids. Many clupeids are able to, uh, to make sounds. And for the clupeids, you have to know that uh, they, are, they have special modification at the level of the hearing system. And these fish are making sound by expelling bubbles from uh, the anus. Uh, it is not the result of a digestion. Uh, in fact, there is a direct connection between the swim bladder and the end of the digestive tract. So they emit bubbles, and the bubbles, these bubbles are made at 5 uh, kilohertz. I explained to you early that the hearing, the, the, the best hearing for the fish was between 20 and, and 5 kilohertz. For the best, for the, for the, for the fish that have the, the best hearing system, it means that they are going to emit bubbles, but most of the predators are unable to hear the bubbles. So it's a, it's a good way to, to, to make the, the, the shooting. And also, many sounds are made uh, during, uh, there are many warning sounds. Huh? It was the case, for example, uh, I, to, I show you the, the piranha, uh, the piranha, the orosant when you when, when they, you take it by hand, they make sounds. So it means that it's a, a warning sound. They, they just try to, to, to alarm all the, all, the, all the specimens that are uh, in the surrounding environment. Uh, this is just to, to show you how we can uh, manage some experiments. So here you have uh, a male and a female of Gobius paganellus. So this is a courtship behavior. The aim for the male is to try to attract the female in the nest. It is always the same, in fact. Huh? Uh, there is no difference between males and uh, other with fish and other mammals. Uh, so what about the, the material we can use? It was a very, it was 15 years ago, uh, the beginning of the, the career. So we don't have a, a lot of money. So we tried just to to have uh, the small boat, to have uh, the hydrophone, and to spend all the night listening the, the sounds uh, in, the, in the sea. After that, we have tried to, to develop a system to be able to have and the sounds and the videos, because with this system, you can only have the sounds. And believe me, that there are a lot of sounds in the sea. We have made an experiment in South Africa. We have asked to a friend to place a hydrophone in a, in a cave. Uh, it was at 150 uh, meter depth. And why in this cave? Because it was a cave uh, that we know was inhabited by a Kelakant. So I wanted to be the first, the first guy to, to, to record the, the communication, the vocal communication in the, in the Kelakant. So he placed the hydrophone in the, in the cave. I under, the guy was, for me, uh, stupid enough to, to, to dive up to 150, but he did it. Uh, because after that, of course, he has to find again the hydrophone, so twice at least. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if I have the sounds of the Kelakant, because in fact, at that depth, with all the fish, even in the cave, 
we have recorded 50 different kinds of sounds. So maybe the Kelakan if is in this, but we don't is if this set of sounds, but we just uh, we just don't know. So just to explain you that if you use only uh, hydrophone, it could be a problem if you want to identify the uh, the species. So now we have developed uh, the system. So we have uh, we have a camera. Uh, that is coupled uh, with a hydrophone, and of course, because uh, many fishes are doing sounds during the night, we need some lights to to see the to see the behavior. And also, we have developed this kind. We no, a friend of us has, has developed this kind of behavior that is quite interesting uh, to realize what we call uh, passive acoustic monitoring. It is the same system than uh, than air. The it, it, when you see a system like that, you can schedule it and say, listen, hydrophone, I would like you record the sounds during five months, but I do not need the, to have a continuous recording. I would like you record, for example, five minutes per hour per, uh, per hours during, uh, during three months. Huh? The, because, why? Because we have a big problem. Then the big problem is that for now, it does not exist a system that can make automatic analysis of the sounds. So just imagine, huh? you, make, you can make the calculus. Five minutes, 24 hours, during three months. Uh, it means that you have to stay in front of your computer only for listen. And when you have listened to the sound, you don't have made the analysis. So it's very time con con consuming. But the system is quite nice. Because, for example, when we did it in uh, French Polynesia or even in Corsica, uh, we are able to have the activity, the biological uh, rhythm activity of different species and to place this, for example, in parallel with the lunar phase or with the, with the tide. Uh, It is the sounds of Dacillus uh, species, uh, a sister species of clownfish, anemone fishes. Just to show you what we can do with the with the sound. So we uh, we have uh, an osteogram. So you have the you have the time, and you just have the variation at the level of the of the intensity. We can work on the sound duration. We can work on the uh, pulse period. It means the time between the onset of three consecutive uh, pulses. Of course, we can also count the number of pulses because it is not the same according to the species. Or even in the same species, uh, if you have two pulses, the signification of the message is not the same uh, if you have uh, eight to ten uh, pulses. We can also work on the pulse, so this part on the pulse duration and on the purse intervals. So it means the silence between two purses. Why it is important? If I do this, if, if I do this, the sounds I have done is the same, but the silence is not the, is not the same. So it means different message or just different, uh, different uh, species. So we have all this kind of uh, alternation between sound and silence, and we can try to, to, to make the, this kind of, uh, of drawing, to, to make comparison between, uh, between species. And of course, of course, we can also have uh, information about the, the, the frequency. So for example, for, for this fish, uh, you have here the different earth, the, dif the different frequency, sorry. And you can see that this fish is mainly able to make zones that are around 200 hertz and also a second part of uh, that is uh, at the level of 400 hertz. And when you have here the, the color, it shows you the intensity uh, of the sounds. So it means that we have a lot of information that can help us to have information about the, the fishes. So for example, uh, because sounds are species specific, we can have the name of the, the, name of the fish. Uh, I place here the nickname uh, because according to the size of the fish, the frequency can be different. Bigger fish are going to make lower frequency than small fish that are going to, to make 
uh, high pitched uh, frequency. Uh, not for all the fishes, but for some of them, the sound producing mechanism is different between male and female. Or simply, sometimes there is a sound production mechanism in the males, but not in the female. So only the male uh, is able to make sounds, and in the female, the female can make the same sounds than the male, or the female is just able to make uh, different kinds uh, of sounds. We have found mainly this for fish that, uh, that are. Uh, living only during the night. Uh, it, of course, it is more important during the night to have uh, an acoustic identification than a visual identification. And I place this also uh, because we have also noticed that for some species, the sound can be different if you are living, for example, in South Africa or if you are living in French Polynesia. The, the same food, so are, for some species, we have shown that there are, are, are kinds of, uh, of dialects. So we are able to have to, uh, all this kind of uh, information. And this is just to, to show you. Uh, you. It's easy in this case. You have the, 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 the piranhas, the clownfish. You see at the level of the osteograms that the, the shapes are completely uh, different. So it can help to identify the different uh, species. Why do we want to do that? Because if I, not you maybe, but when I make this, that, this kind of, speak in, this of, of speech in, in Belgium, I say, who wants to come with me in the Mediterranean Sea during July at 2 o'clock to dive 20 meter depth and to see the fish? Who wants to come with me around the 20 December uh, at 10 p.m. and we are going up to eight uh, or to 100 meter depth. Nobody is going to, to come with me. The big advantage with the hydrophone is that you don't, you don't need to be there, mainly if you are able to schedule it. In fact, you can play the hydrophone into uh, the water to record the sounds and after that to make the analysis. And you can, we could, we, we, the, 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 the global aim we, we would like to, to be able to do is to have the sounds, to have a kind of automatic system allowing us to identify the species only on the basis of the sound he has produced and to place this in an Excel table with, uh, for example, the date, the, the location, the water temperature, and uh, other kind of uh, environmental uh, factors that could be uh, important. Uh, to be frank, uh, a French team is able now to do it, but only for two species. The problem is that, of course, we are speaking about uh, animals, so it means that there is a big variability even inside a single species. And it means that to be able to build this kind of system, we have to, we, we need many different sounds to, to just to be able to work on the variability of a sound. As I told you, uh, if I take a fish uh, from a species at 10 centimeters long, it will not uh, give me the same sounds that the same species at 50 centimeters long. So it could be a problem with this kind of uh, automatic system. Uh, detection. Uh, and of course, as I told you, we could try also to place this in parallel with, for example, the, the temperature. Uh, we, we could easily imagine there is a relationship between some, uh, some, uh, some sounds, sonic characteristic and the uh, temperature, simply because, as you know, fishes are polykiloterms, uh, and it means that the ability to contract the muscle will be improved when the water surrounding the fish is, uh, is, uh, is more, more heat. Mm, thank you, it's warmer. And also, if we place the hydrophone inside the water, it means also that, so we can have the deal activity of the fish according to the sounds that are made, but also we can have the direct impact of the fish boat on the fish, uh, on the fish uh, behavior. So if I want to speak more, more precisely about the Mediterranean Sea, uh, I don't know if you know this station, uh, Starezo. It is in, uh, in Corsica. It's a station for my university. Uh, we have tried to record the sounds there. The sounds you are going to listen now 
are simply extracted from the field. So I, I didn't try to, to, to concentrate all the sounds just to, to, show, to show you how, how nice it, it is. Uh, it, I, I, we don't, I don't do anything about, uh, on the sound file. The sound you are going to listen are made from May to, end, to the end of September from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. It's, for me, it's noisy in the water than outside the water. For this, I just played the hydrophone here. So, we can discuss about this song, but maybe first to, to show you that in Calvi, in Corsica, we were able to record all these uh, guys, and I'm speaking only about fishes, but as I told you, you know that also marine mammals and snapping shrimps are able to, to make songs, but it is less interesting, uh, it is less interesting for, uh, for us. Uh, if I take a concrete, uh, if I take an, uh, an example, uh, do you know the Cuskill of Fidion uh, Rocky? Nice, because um, <laughs> the, <laughs> it is not a well-known fish. Uh, here is the, the behavior of this fish. This fish is living on, only during the night. Uh, it was done at uh, 2 o'clock in the, in the morning. We just turned the, the light on, and uh, you have seen the... We can do it again, maybe. You, you have seen the fish. As soon as there is light, they are going into the sands. Believe it or not, but after 10 minutes, the, the, the tank was completely empty. All the fish were, uh, were in the sand. Uh, oh, I've forgotten. Uh, yes, I've forgotten to place the, the sounds. Uh, I have first recorded this fish here in Croatia. So we, I was really happy to, to find this fish because, uh, again, they are doing the sign during the day, so it's not e easy to, to find them. And usually they are between 20 and 40 meter depth, so it was not easy. But here there was a special uh, place. It was possible to, to find them at two, at two meter depth. Uh, I went then in Corsica to the Belgian station, and I told them I would like to have this fish because I need it to make this section, and it's easier for me to come here than to come here. And the, the, the boss, uh, the director of the station, told me, if you want, but we have never seen this fish here. I'm not sure these fish are living in Corsica. Say, OK, we are, just place, we are just going to play the hydrophone. And of course, you have already understood that we have recorded the sounds of this fish here. Once it has been published, a team here with Marta, uh, Martas, because you are two, uh, at recording sounds close to Venice, but they were not aware about what kind of species it could be done. But with the publication, it means that they found also the fish here. Then after that, the fish were found in France and in Sardinia. And lastly, so the, 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 these fish were found also in Majorque, uh, again, in, again in Corsica and in, uh, and in Crete. So it means that it is a fish that nobody, except you, Nobody knows because they are living in the, in the sands during the, the, the day. They are, they are moving only during the night. But thanks to the hydrophone, we were able to show that, it, that this cryptic species, uh, in fact, can be found all around the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, with special uh, behavior that can help us to identify them. Uh, here, you just have the hour of the day. And as you can see, I told you, they don't like the light. So it means that these fish, in fact, are just mute all the day. And typically, they make sounds two hours after, uh, two hours after sunset, and sometimes quite more sound also uh, before, uh, before the, the, the sunrise. So with this kind of information, it's quite easy to identify these fish uh, everywhere. Uh, the interesting stuff also with these fish species is that there is a direct relationship between the sound frequency and the water temperature. With this kind of graph, you give me the sound and I give you the temperature. 
So uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it is just, this is, of course, just for fun, but uh, we, we know uh, it is uh, possible. And here you can see it is a special signature uh, of this fish. Uh, the, it is the only species we know that is able to make this kind of sounds. And what is, what is species? Uh, it, in fact, they make. So you have always a long period, a small period, and a long period, and also a small period. And with that kind of in, uh, information, it's quite easy to recognize it. And we were lastly uh, quite excited because uh, you see it was in 20 meter depth. We have placed a hydrophone at 150 meter depth, and we have exactly the same kind uh, of signature. So it means that the species we could find them uh, in, in, at a more important depth. And of course, we hope we could find also this fish deeper. Uh, so with the, the, the passive acoustic uh, monitoring, we are, we are able to, to make different kind uh, of study or to gain different kind of information. Uh, we can locate vocal uh, species in the, in the, in the wheel. Uh, we show also uh, what? Wild. <laughs> oh, wild. <laughs> Sorry, Martha. <laughs> in the wild, everybody agree? OK. Uh, we can have the biological activity of, of these fishes all around the, the year. And we can also have the influence uh, of different kinds of uh, environmental or of anthropogenetic uh, impacts uh, on the fish vocal uh, behavior. So, I think that PAM can, can be quite uh, can be a quite interesting tool to, to work on the, the fish uh, biology. And of course, uh, a direct uh, ID related to the PAM is just to be able, for example, to place a hydrophone uh, on this kind of, on the glider and to even if you do not want to go deep, uh, one of the final aim we have, for example, as I told you, uh, we can have the sounds of different species. So it could be, for example, to use a glider to turn a one Mallorca, uh, and with the sound and the location, just locate the different place uh, at which we can find uh, some species. Uh, what kind of species? But for example, uh, Siena umbra, the bone migra. Quite easy to, uh, to identify also. <laughs> or the dusky grouper. So th this kind of experiment has already been done once in Florida. The glider just traveled all Florida. It is, it is the sea in front of Florida, the, the Florida, and they were able to look at to, to, to locate all the grouper nests. What was quite interesting because it was it is a, a protected species in this part uh, of the of the world. Uh, we have made a lot of experiments at the level of the uh, seagrass uh, meadow. Uh, we choose to work at uh, 20 uh, meter depth, uh, and by doing the experiment, we have. We call it the sound, the, 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 the sound you have learned. It's well, wah, 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 wah. In fact, no, I can say you that the, these sounds are made by the, by the scorpion fish. Uh, but now we are unable to identify exactly the species. Because uh, again, all the scorpion fish have the same kind of sound producing mechanism. But for now, uh, the problem is that we are unable to have the sounds of the scorpion fish in the tank. So we cannot make clearly the difference between the different species. We just know that all the croix you have, uh, you have heard are from uh, scorpion fish. Uh, Marta made the, the experiment. So she plays at the same time. So she takes a lot of, of planes. 
uh, head of one in Tuit, in uh, Croatia, and in uh, Mallorca, because we wanted to compare the sound at different uh, places of the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, so, as I told you, in the same habitat, Seagrass Meadow, at the same depth, it was 20 meter depth, and during the same month, it was the, the month of, uh, of uh, July. Uh, here is the kinds uh, of sound she has recorded. Scorpion fish. The brown nigger. And this is the kuski. Uh, you have found uh, this guy. Uh, And this is the recording uh, again in Mallorca for uh, the complete month. Uh, so it is not easy to see it. Uh, this corresponds to a night, uh, a night, a day, a night, a day, uh, and so on. And you can see that you have different kinds of information. For example, the alternation between the blue and uh, the, the other colors. So show you the, the alternations. Uh, and I can also explain you that here, yeah, this line with the yellow uh, area you have there, correspond, uh, corresponding to the qua. And this qua are made during, uh, during, the, during the night. And for the other color, you can have all these big lines are due, in fact, to the boat. And so you can see the alternation between production of sounds from the boat during the day, production of qua uh, by the fish during, uh, during the night. Uh, and you can compare the sounds you have in Mallorca with the sounds that we're recording in Starezo, so in Corsica and in Crete. Uh, you see that there are big uh, differences at the level uh, of the soundscape. Uh, since here in the Calvi, here all, the, all this uh, traces uh, corresponds also to the uh, to the qua, so to the sounds made by the scorpion finch. But you see also that the uh, traffic noise is less uh, important. Uh, here, it is not a problem of traffic noise. In fact, uh, all the diff uh, all the big uh, activity you see here are due to the mainly to the wind, uh, because it was not a good uh, uh, weather condition. Uh, analysis is still running, but what we can see uh, is that the number of qua is more important in Mallorca than, uh, than in Kuwait. But at the opposite, there is also something that is quite important, is that the number of different kinds of sounds is less important in Mallorca than in, uh, than in Kuwait. Uh, we have to work on the different reasons. Uh, the reason it could be due to the traffic uh, noise, uh, because uh, maybe fish are less able to communicate because of the boat. Uh, but also, we could have a, div a direct influence uh, with, uh, with new species arriving via the, the, the canal. And so it could explain also that, that the biodiversity is more important at this level. Uh, now we have a proposal. Uh, Marta would like to, to do this again, but also to make the comparison between some points we could place here, here, and at, the, at that level. So to, to see how, uh, how the fish sound, how the soundscape uh, is variating uh, along the uh, two kinds of, uh, of gradients. And of course, what we have also observed uh, and it is related maybe to the previous re uh, results, is that the traffic noise is really more important in Mallorca than in Crete or than in, Co uh, than in Corsica. And it is, it, when I say really important, it is really important. For example, we had the sounds we have recorded in Corsica. Uh, you can see the, the sound level during the night, the sound level during the day. Uh, this is the same, the same, the same range. You, so you see uh, it, uh, yes, during the day. So you see, it's quite uh, more important. In fact, 
when we record the sound in Corsica, if we, if we take the duration between 10 EM and 12, uh, and 10 EM at noon, the probability to have the so, uh, a fish, uh, a sound boat, is 100%. So it means, frankly, that for the fish, it's quite impossible to communicate during that period uh, of, the, of the day. And what are, you, what are we going to, to do here with, uh, with Mark and his team? Uh, we would like to work on deep sea uh, fishes. As I told you, if it's dark, they have to, to communicate. Uh, and also, we have uh, other important information. Uh, you have here the, the, the fish for different families, so the Sebastidae, the Macuridae, and the Ophididae. These fish were never recorded, but we have worked on the anatomy of these fishes, and they all show a sound producing apparatus. So they are all able to, uh, to make sounds. So it means that uh, we should be at the right place at the, at the right moment to be able to, to, to record them. But it is the reason, it is mainly the reason so we are confident that we should be able to, to record sounds. We are fighting with Marta because I'm quite afraid about the, the season. I, I don't, I'm not sure that January is the best season, but she, she told me I'm, I'm, wrong. I'm wrong. Okay, if you want, Marta. Uh, if it fails, maybe we could try to, to do it later. I mean, uh, something like uh, in, in late August. Uh, and we have, of course, different uh, questions. We would like to, fee to see if these fish are really, uh, are mainly vocal, because of course you know that I am speaking about you know, uh, five species, but there are more than five, than five species and that uh, depth. Uh, we could, we hope in this case that we could find a place where fish are spawning. We could also have uh, information of uh, spawning uh, period, but also you have to know that we have another system, uh, we, I, I, uh, a system that we could place into the water, but it is not a moving system. It is the same system that that, but with the camera and with the light. And in this case, if we know a place where the fish are spawning, we could just use another system to place it by, uh, I don't know, six, uh, 600 meter depth and uh, ask the system to work during two months uh, to have uh, cycles on the sun uh, corresponding to the sun production. And also we think it could be interesting because uh, uh, deep sea fishes represent uh, important fishery uh, resources. And uh, we think that if, you, we, if we understand the dynamics of the reproduction in deep sea fishes, it could help, of course, for, for the monitoring of, uh, of these species. And of course, the most, maybe the most important is to have uh, information about the real impact of uh, anthropogenic sounds of the, of the behavior of uh, fishes. Uh, it can be from nothing, I mean, no reaction for the fish because some of them could not care to simply the death uh, of the fish. And between that, uh, you can have uh, physical damages or uh, fishes that could escape for, uh, to, to, to gain other, other place. Uh, so here are the, the objective. So it's to place this and this together. And uh, we, we, of course, uh, hope we will have uh, sounds. And after that, we will have to work, of course, on the sound uh, description to make the manual scrolling of all the sounds to, to be able to, to, to describe them. And uh, so yesterday, we placed the hydrophone uh, on the glider. We test it. Uh, it's, it's OK. Yeah. But you, know, you know, it's always OK in the lab. Uh, so after that, uh, we, we can just expect uh, it, will be, uh, it will be OK. And we have taste the hydrophone on the, the glider. And uh, oh, we have taste the hydrophone of the gliders because, all of, of course, we are going to record different sounds, sounds of the species of the fish, I hope, but also sounds of the boat. And you have to be able to make the difference between the sounds coming from the glider and the sounds coming uh, and in, in, in the other sounds. So 
So it shows at least that the hydrophone is running <laughs> on the glider. So here is, I thank you for, for your attention. If you have questions. Yes. I'm sorry, I don't, I, I don't hear. I'm coming, I'm coming. Uh, in fact, we, you are speaking about turbidity, but uh, yes. In, in, in fact, uh, for f we, we have also observed that there is a difference between uh, sounds that are producing that are produced during the night and sounds that are pro produced during the day. Uh, for example, during the day, the the variability of sound is less important because most of the time the sound is related to a behavior. For example, uh, a male, that uh, damselfish male, that, that tries to, to attract a female, uh, is going to jump into the water and making sounds. So the, 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 there is two information. I mean, there is the information uh, on, the, on, the, on the movement, uh, the, there is the, the acoustic information, and sometimes also for, for certain fishes, there are also modifications in the fact that the fish is simply to have a different color. Du when we did it during the night, and during the night, sounds are, uh, are more distingu distinguishable just because, in this case, the fish have to be able to recognize only on the sound production, on the, on the, sound, uh, on the basis of the sound production. They cannot be helped by, uh, by, the, by the view. Did I understand to you? Yes. Yes and no. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Explain. Uh, uh, Explain. From the 120 uh, sounds that are identified global wide, as you mentioned to us, could we find re uh, regions that, uh, based on the environmental factors that exist there, we could find 20 species that they produce more sounds No, 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 not yet. Uh, not, it, it, it was simply not done. Uh, for now, uh, most of the, of the scientists just try to have sounds, and it is, uh, the reason it is uh, also a problem uh, is that we concentrate on, f on having sounds. Uh, and we should go to the next step, uh, that is, to make the relationship between having sounds and different environmental factor. And I, when I'm speaking about environmental factor, of course, I speak also of the fish community. Because it is the, Marta could explain you, uh, because we have uh, other ideas about uh, the difference between Mallorca and, uh, and the other uh, species. Uh, maybe you could explain. Uh, the, about the, your theory about the fact that we have uh, more many quas. Qua, qua is the name of the sounds we give to the scorpion fish. Uh, why, why you think you have many sounds here? More many here than here. One of the, mm, but this is really an hypothesis too, is that different 
fish species that are vocal have a different sensitivity to anthropogenic disturbance. So I expect some fish species to be more uh, influenced by anthropogenic noise, for example, and other species to be less affected. And one of my hypo one I, what I have noticed uh, by analyzing this data is that in Mallorca, the number of qua is significantly higher than in all the other stations. And also, a uh, thing that I think is quite interesting is that, um, for example, in Corsica, as Eric said, the qua are from 6 p.m. to the morning. That's it. They don't vocalize during the day. While in Mallorca, when I manage to hear something between the boat, I have qua also during the day. So the same species, the, the same species complex, because we still speak of species complex with the qua, has a different behavior, I think, in relation to environmental condition. Could it be both noise? We probably we need to set up a new experiment to test this, but it's an hypothesis. And about the liquidity, I don't have the, we don't have the data set to test this possibility, but it might be possible that um, changes in the same phase, changes in turbidity, they, one day is less turbid and the other is more. It might be that it has an influence on the production of the community, but nobody has tested it this yet, in, in as far as I know. In, in birds, uh, at least for certain species of birds, it has been shown that the same species will have different sounds if they are living downtown or in the forest, just because they try to adapt, sort of they, they try to adapt the song in function of the uh, anthropogenic, anthropogenic sounds. What we know, for, for the choir, we know very few things, because until uh, a year and half ago, so when I came to Mallorca with the Iron Queen in 2017, I knew there were choir, but we still didn't know who made them. So with this sound, the scientific knowledge is still restricted. Mm -hmm. Other species like the brown meager or ophidion, okay, has been studied more. So for example, we know for the brown meager, um, another research team has studied that in presence of both noise, of high level of both noise, the brown meager increase the number of four. Basically, it tries to repeat the message over and over again. In the same strategy, you would use, uh, I don't know, in a loud concert, you are trying to speak with your friends, and your friends don't hear you. So you say it again. You say it again. And that's a case of vocal compensation. It has been observed. So there are surely effects of um, environmental, let's say, a factor on communication. But we know some effects for some species for others, we still don't know. So yes, because there is another good news for the Buen Migra. We were able to compare songs <laughs> that were recorded 70 years ago with songs we have recorded two years ago. And we were able to record, to, to recognize the, the, the same species. So it means that even if there are modifications, we, we could use PAM on a long term, because if, even if there are modifications, they are not important enough the vocal compensation yes. relates to the number of sound per minute, but the sound feature of brown uh, meager are, are the same. consistent. So we know it's that fish. And with that sound, we could study the... And, the, and, and, and also the, the idea is that, of course, all the fish are not able to make sounds, or at least we were not able to record all of them, but we could use some sentinel species. It is also the, ca the, the case for the, it was for the Buen Meager. Also, if the bo in, in Venice, if the, if the Buen Meager is there, there are 14 species that are associated with the Buen Meager. So it means that if you have the sons of the, the, the Buen Meager, you can expect that all the other species are still there also. We, it would be nice, yes. I think in the future, one thing that could be nice is to find acoustic sentinels that could give us information about the environment. And uh, the first uh, paper that described the qua, uh, that has done in collaboration between the Lab of Eric and this group in France we mentioned more than once, Chorus, is uh, suggesting that maybe the qua could become a sentinel. But we are still to, we still need to do other experiments to be able to, to say this. But yes, that could be a good application in the future for passive acoustics because you record one, 
and you know that you can have information on an entire community. But we have also to choose the correct species. I mean, for example, the, I show you the, the behavior of the gobit. Uh, you know that there are different species of gobit all, uh, all around here, but uh, you cannot expect to record them at three meters. All, all the fish are, are, are not able to, to, to make important sounds at, at the level of the, of the volume. So there are fish are very loud, like the qua, uh, or the nigger. So fish are, and fish like the gobi cannot become a sentinel because you really need to be on the island yes. on, on the top of the fish. If not, you really don't get the sound. Or to use something like that to, to visit your area. Yes. Many thanks for your presentation. I would like to know whether you could explain a little bit more about the about the this mission with the glider. What is the path that you plan to do with the glider? Are you planning to launch in Mallorca and go to Ibiza or just we are going to around Mallorca and and also the, about the configuration of, of the hydrophone, whether you will be recording every Half an hour or we so for the for the travel you have to ask to Mark. It will basically be uh, the standard canal edition. So we will launch uh, soon. This is the first time we have ever attached a sensor on top of the glider. We will uh, launch in front of uh, Cap de Calafiguera, so basically getting out of Palmas Bay. Uh, we will uh, we will configure the glider to go basically north. Northwest towards La Gonera. We will, this is not going to be part of the scientific mission, let's say. It's going to be like the test part, make sure that it flows nicely and so on. And then we will cover one Mallorca channel that is between uh, La Gonera and uh, Cap Mostasse in Ibiza. We will turn, go around the island uh, from the north face of the island, and then we will stay in the Ibiza channel. Uh, as long as ten sunsets, and if there is, there is you know, battery, uh, we will come back and we will complete one more Mallorca channel. The device uh, has an energy, has an autonomy of 21 days. It will have to be. We were supposed to launch yesterday, but you know that the weather conditions are very adverse. So they will leave the device on this Saturday. So Saturday, Sunday. Monday are basically lost, so we will have 19 days. We will then decide, depending on how the first part of the mission goes, if we will intercept the glider, remove the sensor, and place a dummy weight, or if we are going to leave the device for the for the whole mission. But for sure, batteries will not last. We choose a DC cycle for the recording of the device is going to record the three minutes every ten. And we choose this DC sample for two reasons. Point first, because we have, of course, like every electronic device, we have a limitation due to battery, no? So we wanted a, a compromise between battery duration. Eh? And because there has been a study that I personally really like that uh, investigated the effect of different speed sampling on the quality of the data you have acoustically. And for fish, three minutes every 10 we notice is a good speed sampling means to have information. So this is what we chose this time. We don't exclude in the future, if this mission goes well and this will go on, to maybe uh, work on new device that have an extended uh, battery capacity that might also allow us either to change the DC cycle or either to record it for longer period or both. And we will record the sounds between uh, 20 and 40,000 hertz, uh, meaning that if we, we, we for sure we we'll have fish sounds if, if they are emitted sounds. For sure we will have the traffic noise and a part maybe of, uh, of marine mammals, at least for the, for the low frequency uh, sounds of marine mammals. And I hope not so much snipping shrimp. Snapping shrimp is just awful. Good, that's fish by acoustic, because 
But, uh, but also because I want to you be aware about, about that, uh, we are speaking about a hydrophone, but for the qua, uh, just put your head into the water and you will, uh, you, you will be able to hear it. After sunset, I can hear it in the end in Corsica, in the station in Rome, you can hear it in all other people. So, and we had an experience with the divers that were, we hear how thunder was, it was like a flood, and we said, it's, it's a problem. So, we don't have a question, just now, I have a It depends of the. It depends on the hydrophones. It is always the same. More, more you have functionality, more it is more, more it is dangerous for, with uh, an electronic system. So here, it's we we have to 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 make the recordings. But what we can do after that, we can of course use the software to delete some frequency and to keep all only the frequency we we want to to have. There are morphological constraints acting on fish sound production. Mm. And to make the long story short, um, fish sound are concentrated in a restricted range of frequency, between 20 Hz and 1,200 Hz. So for us, if the iPhone just give us that range, we are happy. And this one can go up to 44 kHz, but there are other models that people maybe use for marine mammals that have a much wider sample rate. For us, this is more than enough for what we need to do. Yes. Yes. Wait. I don't remember where I did that. about fish eating, for sure, I can just say two things. On the ground meter, and like, that's a very useful study, sitting in that sense, they show that in presence of water noise, the eating threshold increase. Basically, like us in a noisy place, uh, you have to be closer to be able to communicate, or uh, the sound needs to be louder. So there are surely effects on that sound. Uh, so this is a system we have in uh, in Belgium. It is exactly the same stuff when you uh, you have if you have hearing problem, uh, you go in a cabin. You have uh, earphones, and uh, the doctor sends you uh, signals. He knows the he knows the frequency. He knows the amplitude, and you you raise your hand if you listen if you hear something. Uh, it's not easy for a fish to, to, to do something like this. At the beginning, it was really not kind. The, the really beginning, it was Pavlov. It means we place the fish in the water, we send the sounds, and a, an electric shock. And of course, the fish was, was doing something like this. And of course, at the end, you just send the sounds. And if the fish is, quite, is moving, it's because he's expecting to have an electric shock. So but it was not really uh, happy. And very really nice for the for the fish. And now what we what we do, we place the fish into a tank with two small electrodes that are just at the level of the skin. So it's it's okay for the fish. I mean, after the experiment, the the fish is still uh, is still living, and we know and we know some uh, and we send some sounds. So we know uh, against the frequency and the intensity of the of the sounds, 
and we see we, we, we see when there is an absence of reaction uh, because you know, the system in fact it is it, it corresponds to the background noise activity of the brain so the fish is in the tank in the dark there is nothing except the sound and we have the back the background activity of the of the brain and if during this background activity just at the moment you send the sounds you see something you can expect that the brain activity is related to the fact that the, the fish has been able to detect uh, the sounds. And so when you see this kind of graph, but you have the, the frequency, you have the threshold, so the dB, uh, the dB level, and it just means that in this graph that fish are, this fish is able to listen all the sounds that are above uh, the line. As I told you, it's between uh, 50 hertz to, for this, for this guy, it was up to uh, 2,000, uh, 2000 hertz. Uh, maybe the best to give you an idea is this, not this, this. The first sounds you are going to listen is the sounds you can listen with your human ear, I mean. <laughs> It is a toast fish. And so it's nice because also you have no heard the, the snapping shrimp. Uh, it's really awful when you wait, when you try to make the nice. And now it is what the fish is able to hear. So the snapping shrimp are making sounds at around 6,000, 10,000 hertz, but the, the, the fish is just unable to eat, to eat them. So it's quieter for him. And so, and, and this is, so we, we, we have a, a global ID of the, of the hearing system of, uh, of most fishes. Corresponds correspond to the peak frequency of the sound they make. So this is, is meaningful because it means communication is effective and the signal is air shaped for being successfully detected. In Google, for example, this is okay. And all the fish are not able to, to hear in the, the same way. For, to, to have a good hearing, you need to have a swim bladder. Uh, to have a swim bladder. If you don't have the swim bladder, you're not able to, to hear correctly in fishes. Uh, we even make the experiment with flatfish. So flatfish, they can hear anything. The sharks, they can hear uh, anything. But if you place a small balloon, balloon? Balloon, balloon just here, it is acting like a swim bladder, and in this case, the fish has the same hearing abilities and other and than other species. Anyways. Good. So, what is very much, and uh, <laughs> Thank you. My name is David. I work at Sortip as well, and now I'm moving to University of Exeter. And um, I did some experiments with the glider. We've been following sea turtles. And 